guys and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is April, a housewife that relocated to Colorado from California. And if you're one of my subbies, hey YouTube bestie. So as you can tell by the title, we're gonna be talking about something that's kind of serious, but before we jump into it, I want y'all to know that this is a collab with my girl, Tayana Arlington. Hopefully I'm pronouncing her name right. She is a certified life and relationship coach located in North Carolina. I love watching her videos. She gives great tips um, and advice when it comes to relationships and she kind of splits them up. She'll do some videos for the guys and she'll do some for the girls. She gives great advice like I said. She's super sweet and funny and y'all really need to check out and support her channel. Her video will be linked below as well as her channel. Go ahead and give her some of that YouTube bestie love. So like I said, today is a very serious topic, at least for me because I suffer from it. We're gonna be talking about anxiety and some tips and tricks that I've learned to deal with my triggers of anxiety. I was diagnosed, I say right after high school, 2004, 2005-ish kind of telling my age but uh yeah i was definitely diagnosed with it it doesn't happen as often i don't get anxiety attacks as often but when i do i feel like they're more intense because i am a housewife and i know that sounds really weird you're the sole person that's taking care of the house not to say my wife doesn't work but her, her role is outside the house to provide and she does that very well my role is inside the house and that's to take care of this house cooking cleaning organizing that's all on me and i take that role but sometimes Sometimes it can get a bit much y'all for me to one of the biggest things that I had to learn is to really sit down and figure out what my triggers are to my anxiety and these this can be very different for every individual person some people have one trigger some people have many triggers um, it just depends on the person everyone's different there's no cookie coder you know stamp when it comes to anxiety and that goes as well for your symptoms some people have a lot of symptoms some people have one it just depends on the individual person so you definitely want to sit down and evaluate and try to figure out if you can what triggers your anxiety Anxiety. For me, I don't have that many triggers. I've pretty much been able to kind of pinpoint what it is that sets me off. Like I said, becoming a housewife, I don't have anxiety attacks that often, but when I do, they are really, they're bad, y'all. Definitely feeling overwhelmed. As a housewife, as a stay-at-home mother, as a mother, as a woman, sometimes you can get overwhelmed. Sometimes there's a mess in every room of the house and you know, you have to run and do errands. You have this and you have that and you have dinner and you have bills, it can get overwhelming. That's definitely one of my biggest triggers is just feeling just extremely overwhelmed. My two other triggers are when I'm feeling extremely nervous. Funny story, when I first went on my first date with my now wife, I had an anxiety attack and I just, because I was so nervous, I had a little crush on her for a minute. We finally were meeting in person. We finally went on a date, and I totally, y'all, I was, I was going through it. The struggle was real on the first date because your girl totally had an anxiety attack. If I'm feeling unsure, I'm a natural planner. I, I always, maybe it's a control freak in me. I don't know, but I like to know what's going on, what's gonna happen. I need to know, and when I don't know, your girl gets an anxiety attack. I don't like being unsure. Not so much what the future holds, but I like to plan out things and when things just, when I get surprised or when things come up, big things, it can really trigger my anxiety. My symptoms, like I said, symptoms can be a wide range depending on the person. And me personally, when I get an anxiety attack, I start sweating like uh, you know what in church. I don't know why I just buckets of sweat. I will just start sweating that usually happens when I get very nervous I just sweat. I also get very 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 bad headaches and our migraines One of the more serious symptoms that I have is I feel like I can't breathe. I take very uh, shallow breaths I feel like I cannot take a deep breath and that alone will just if you feel like you can't breathe You're you're gonna get worried. You're gonna get scared. It just makes everything ten times worse I have been known to feel like my chest hurts, my heart hurts, you know, it kind of feels like, I don't know what having a heart attack feels like I've never had one, I can only imagine, but I definitely feel have, definitely have chest pains on my more severe anxiety attacks. So 
with that being said, before you do anything, I heavily advise you to talk to someone, a mental health provider and or your primary care physician to figure out your symptoms and your triggers. That's before anything. So now that we've talked about that, let's jump into these five steps. I'm putting up 10, I don't know why. Let's talk about these five steps that have helped me with my step one for me. And this is across the board whenever I have any kind of attack, whether it turns out to be mild, where it turns out to be severe is just breathe. And I know that sounds completely goofy, but I'm serious. When I have an anxiety attack, like I said, the more severe ones, I feel like I can't take a deep breath. It's important on my more or mild anxiety attacks. It's just a good thing to just step away from the situation or whatever is triggering that attack and just breathe. I've been known to walk out of a room. You know, I see this huge big old mess and I get overwhelmed and I start sweating and I start getting a headache and I just step step outside and I just breathe or I step in another room and just breathe just literally it's soothing it starts the hop it slows down your heart rate so you calm down try to take a moment for yourself to really assess what's going on and to relax and tell yourself it's gonna be okay. the next step I tend to do I like to walk it kind of piggybacks off of step number one which is breathing but I will step outside and I will just go for a walk around the block this allows me to clear my head to relax relax to calm down and then once I've reached a state where I'm kind of calm think about what triggered me why it triggered me and what what what, what can I do about it just give yourself time basically time for time to yourself really honestly talk to yourself calm yourself down and then sometimes it's best not even to think about it at that moment you could be so upset the anxiety attack could be so hard on you that you don't need to think about it right now let's concentrate on me calming down that's the most important thing right talking to a healthcare professional about it. She said, well, how about you exercise? And I am about to exercise in life. I don't, you know, if you a power ranger, kudos to you. Your girl is lazy. Your girl ain't exercising. I go up and down three flights of stairs each day. You know, when I bring my groceries, that's three flights. That's three trips up three flights of stairs. That's enough for me. The next step I usually do, or a step that is, I can't even put it to words how much it's helped me, is to journal. But I will tell you that journaling, writing down my thoughts, writing down my feelings, writing down just what is happening in the moment has honestly just really helped me. Like literally your girl will be sitting there sweating, taking shallow breaths, you know, writing out what's going on at this moment. It's something about just letting go and letting your feelings out. Me personally, one of my biggest faults is I don't talk about my feelings a lot. I'm always the friend or the family member that's very protective over everyone else. I am a very protective person. I'm a very empathetic person to my family and my friends, but I have a hard time expressing what's happened to me or my story or my truth. When it comes to journaling, it's just being able to release everything that's inside and that is really therapeutic and it has honestly really, really helped me. And that has helped me identify some of my triggers. Uh, just this journaling process and you kind of can pinpoint some of the problems or some of the triggers um, that maybe you didn't know about. Another thing that helps with my anxiety, which may sound really weird to some of y'all, and very nerdy, but planning things out. Planning really helps me uh, calm down and it really helps with my anxiety. Like I said, one of my biggest triggers is feeling overwhelmed, whether it be with housework, whether it be with the project. As long as I was able to plan things out, it truly helped with my anxiety. I was organized. I didn't feel like I was so overwhelmed because I had a plan. When I have something in front of me as far as a roadmap of what I need to do, I know that sounds weird to some of y'all. Most of my my triggers that's what I another thing that helps me a great deal might not work for everyone I understand that but I give it to God I don't consider myself that religious I do consider myself a spiritual person I was raised in the church Southern Baptist you know I will literally and I'm being for real for real, I'm being literal with you guys I will go make myself some tea and I will sit down somewhere and I will literally have a conversation with God like I'm having a conversation with y'all out loud and situations where I just it's too much my last resort is to give it to God because there's always going to be situations that are not in your control I can't control other people what they say how they feel how they treat me I can't control that and there's always going to be life situations that are out of your control and you can't stress over them you can't trip over them and that's very much easier said than done right talk to God and once I talk to him I give it to him I can't stress over it anymore I can't change it it's not in my control I've alleviated every 
step there is to changing that particular thing it didn't change there's nothing more that i can do so i understand that everyone is not religious and i understand everyone is not spiritual good if you have like a best friend or even a trusted family member that you can just call up and say hey i need you to be a sounding board right now me giving it to god is just like me releasing it into the universe so i want to give a full disclaimer I am not a healthcare provider, a medical professional. I'm just trying to share with y'all what helps me with my anxiety. Maybe it'll help you with yours. I'm not saying that it will. I'm not saying that what I'm saying is gospel and just because it works for me, it's gonna work for you. I just want to share with you what has helped me because anxiety is a serious thing. A lot of people make fun of it. A lot of people don't understand it. It can be very debilitating. So if I can help anyone with anxiety, I'm definitely all for it. So this was a little bit out of my comfort zone. I normally don't do videos like this and try to get too personal, let y'all know all my business. This is something that's very important to me. Mental health is very important. Something in my community, the African-American community, it really has a stigma attached to it, which is very unfortunate and I don't think it should be like that. I think I can do to be an advocate or to help someone else. I'm all for. I don't know how many videos like this I'm gonna make, but if you liked this video, please give me a big thumbs up. Until next time, guys. Bye.